Welcome everyone to the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group meeting of July 23rd. This is a special edition. We'll focus on Google Summer of Code today. Uh, first, let's take a look at action items and then we'll talk Google Summer of Code. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen so that we can see the agenda. All right, so let's go larger. Action items I had, I had the action to uh, switch the meeting URL to the CDF Zoom account. It is uh, it is switched. We're using it. Uh, I believe the Google Calendar has been updated, but I'll check that after this meeting. Um, and I'll double check that it's in the platform page. We're now including them regularly in platform pages. I still have the action to open a JEP for Docker operating system support. And we've still got, as far as I know, the Docker build rework PR and the Alpine image update PR. Now on that one, I've been doing interactive testing with it and it's been working quite well. Uh, Oleg, you've got an item on, oh, on .NET Framework 2.0. Do you want to go ahead and talk to that one? Uh, yes, Sean. Uh, so one uh, major announcement that we finally integrated the uh, changes based on the recent Windows support policy. Uh, so we dropped support for .NET Framework 2 from the recent weekly release and going for uh, what the .NET Framework 4 is uh, the minimum requirement. So what it means for users uh, they, that uh, there might be some extra upgrade steps if they want to keep using .NET Framework 2.0. I have just submitted a blog post for that. It's still in drafts, but if somebody is interested, you can take a look. Uh, and it also unblocks uh, updates. For example, uh, we're working on uh, YAML configuration support and a Windows service wrapper. Um, the current uh, baseline and the master branch already drops support for .NET Framework 2. So in the future versions, we will be able to update and um, uh, it should work smoothly for the Jenkins users. Uh, Excellent. So one major update. Again, uh, yeah, there will be a blog post because it's a breaking change. So I will appreciate the reviews after the call. And maybe another issue which uh, was noting is MSA packaging uh, issues on Jenkins uh, in Jenkins weekly releases. So just to explain the context, uh, we experienced uh, multiple uh, issues over the past week. So if you go to the Jenkins change log, you may see that uh, there is a warning that MSI package is not available. Um, it happens uh, due to two reasons. So firstly, we hit the issue with uh, preliminary password expiration and official uh, Docker agent images. It was a critical bug impacting Jenkins users as well. Now it's resolved and thanks to Alexel uh, for patches and the release. Uh, you won't be able to see it here, it's only in the agent change log. I mean, uh, the Docker agent part. Right. And uh, yeah, um, still, um, even with this patch, we are not able to release MSI packages uh, because uh, there is another issue with uh, code signing and packaging on Windows. We traced it uh, back to breaking changes um, in the container environment we use. Uh, basically, it's a bug uh, in containers uh, shipped uh, for Windows, and we cannot uh, do much about that. So if you're interested, you can uh, go join uh, Jenkins uh, to this IRC channel. Uh, but basically, it looks like we will be waiting for Microsoft to release a new version. So, um, most likely there will be no MSI releases uh, for a while, hopefully until the next week. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen uh, with the next uh, LCS release. Um, currently, the scheduled uh, LCS release is mid-August. Hopefully, by this time, uh, this issue will be fixed. If not, uh, we may have to ship it without MSI installer as well. Which would be unfortunate because yeah, the new MSI installer actually includes a lot of uh, patches and updates uh, by Alexo. So we would be interested to ship that. Or maybe it still makes sense to do it in .1 LCS. So let's see. 
So the workaround is uh, trivial. You, instead of using MSI packaging, you just download work file and replace it manually. There is no magic there, it will work. Okay. I guess uh, that's it on platform related topics. Um, yeah, sorry that it took some time. All right, then let's move on to Google Summer of Code project reviews. So let's see, we've got the Git plugin performance project, performance improvement. Which others should be on the agenda, Oleg? So officially we have uh, three projects uh, which are part of Platform Seek. So it's uh, Git uh, plugin performance improvements, then uh, custom Jenkins distribution build service. Um, and uh, the third uh, project, oh, just a second. Oh, yeah, Windows uh, services and YAML support, sorry. But uh, we also have other students on the call. So we have Sumit, who is working on uh, external fingerprint storage, which is arguably a part of Jenkins platform as well. And uh, yeah, we have Keja, who is working on uh, GitHub uh, Checks API. So if they're interested, I think we can talk about their projects as well. Okay. Any particular order you prefer? No. Mm -hmm. You have an order on this list, so we can go with that. All right, well, I'm gonna mute myself so that my clickety-clack keyboard sounds do not, uh, do not disturb. And if others would like to share, you're welcome to share. Just call me out and I will stop sharing and, and you can take over sharing. Uh, let's go ahead and get started then. Uh, so Rishab, would you like to, well, let's start with Git plugin performance for improvement. Sure, uh, I'll start. So, uh, Mark, you have to enable uh, screen sharing. You're, you're on you're the mute. Mute. You, Mark, we can't hear you. And you're still screen sharing. So um, for this phase, for the phase two, one of the uh, major deliverable we had for Git performance, uh, Git plugin performance improvement was to implement the, uh, the insights we gained from the benchmarks we did due, uh, throughout the phase one. So uh, now what we've done is that we've created a class inside the Git plugin uh, which is right now being called as the Git's repo size estimator class. So um, the name might change, but so this is the architecture and I'm going to explain what it does. So this class will enable Git plugin to recommend uh, the optimal Git tool for uh, 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 the current uh, repository size. So if we have the size of the repository, we will, we will be able to tell which implementation we should use. Um, and the rule we will use for the, uh, to tell that was derived from the benchmarks we uh, executed during the phase one. So, uh, so, the, so from the starting, the, the class takes can be instantiated uh, using two things. The first is uh, a multi-branch project uses a, an SCM source object, so it can use that, or it can use a remote URL, the repository's URL, to instantiate. Both of them are uh, possible. Uh, what then? What it does is first it can it checks for cache. So uh, the multi-branch project it it uh, it stores cache. Uh, the the dot .git repositories are stored. Uh, as cache uh, for the multi-branch project. So what we do is we estimate the size of the repository using that cache, and uh, then we apply our rule to recommend the tool, the Git tool you uh, the plugin should use. And uh, one thing I forgot to tell is that we will not check out any repository. The aim of this class is to 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 estimate the size without checking out the repository. Because if we check out the repository, then the whole purpose of uh, improving the performance, uh, it kind of uh, doesn't make sense. The second option is using other plugins to find out the size. 
Now, how are we doing that? We have exposed a new extension point, uh, which is now called, right now called the repository size API, which can be extended by plugins like GitHub branch source plugin, GitLab branch source plugin, or uh, the Bitbucket one. So they, those plugins can query, uh, they can query a GET request, an HTTP GET request to uh, get the size of the repository and uh, we ask for the size of the repository and once we have that we can use that if we don't have the cache uh, uh, the dot gate repository cached uh, in the project and then we apply our heuristic and finally we recommend the tool the plugin should use to um, to perform the git operations so right now the status of this uh, this class is that uh, the pr the pull request have been uh, it has been raised it is under review right now. I have written the test cases. Some of them are um, some of the test cases I have to write. So uh, it's the, that is the progress with the with this class. The second thing I'd like to discuss is uh, some of the benchmarks. I so the second objective was to expand the benchmark study we were doing. Uh, so initially we were only taking the size of the repository uh, as the parameter to judge the performance of uh, get fetch. Now we tried doing that with uh, multiple parameters like uh, the number of branches for a repository, uh, the commit history, the commit size, and the number of tags. And while we were doing these experiments, we made sure that the size of the repository is not changing because if that changes, then there's no, uh, we cannot infer anything from these tests. So the first test you see is, uh, you see here is uh, from, uh, then, uh, so the what we do here is that we are varying the number of branches with each repository. There's one sample base repository with just one branch, then it increases to 10, to 100, 2000, and then to 5000. And what you're seeing here, uh, the graph, the, the most obvious thing is that the performance, uh, the time taken by GitFetch is increasing as the number of branches increase. That's the obvious fact. Uh, difference in implementations, Git and JGit, if you can see, JGit is performing better for uh, branches less than 100. JGit is performing uh, better than Git in those cases. And I think that is the only valuable insight we have from this, um, from this benchmark. Uh, also, um, yeah, I think that's, that's it for this benchmark. The next one is uh, here we try to keep the size constant and we uh, vary the number of commits. The number of commits, they start from 1, 10, 100, 1000 and 5000 in a similar fashion. What we can see here, two noticeable, um, uh, I would say points. The first is that there's not much of a difference in the performance of git fetch with varying the number of commits. As you can see with git, uh, it's it's almost same as a one millisecond or uh, a difference or so for JGit it's also the same thing, but the second point the difference between Git and JGit is is again we can see that JGit is performing better in all cases uh, for the number of commits if uh, for for that parameter, so um, this is also something interesting here. The last test is tags so here also we've done the same thing we've tried to keep the size constant and we've increased the number of tags uh, in this test uh, one of the major thing i could find out was that uh, the uh, the effect of increasing the number of tags is affecting the performance of git fetch uh, magnitude wise uh, in a i would say um, see the right word would be that uh, it's affecting more uh, when we compare branch and commit, the uh, difference in performance is not that much. But with tags, you can see for uh, 5,000 tags, which is it's a very high number, but it's almost half a second. That is the amount of time it takes if we have too much tags. So, and again, there's a difference between JGit and Git. JGit is performing better in all cases. Uh, so, um, from these tests, what we can infer is that JGit can perform better than Git. So we've we've seen conditions where JGit is performing better than Git, 
before these tests, the condition was that the size of the repository has to be small, very small, like 5 MB or 10 MB, less than that. Then JGit would perform better than Git. But here we can also see that for certain parameters, JGit will perform better than Git. But the question, the bigger question here is, which, uh, what parameter affects the most and will that parameter overshadow the other um, parameters when we are talking about the um, the the level uh, the amount of correlation these parameters have on the performance and that's a question I uh, I need to figure out I haven't figured out yet we could discuss that with the mentors as well so um, so apart from these we've uh, improved the benchmarks uh, improved them in the sense that we've I've added a validation uh, uh, initial check kind of a class which checks the uh, validity of the operations which are being performed. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's what I want to say. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thanks for the update. Uh, the improvements look pretty nice. And yeah, I'm looking forward to see them uh, released. So the most of the changes uh, are in the Git client plugin, right? Or are they in the Git plugin? Uh, the a the class which we have developed will be in Git plugin, mm -hmm. not in Git client plugin. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the the benchmarks are in the Git client. Git client plugin, yes. Yeah. Right. Benchmarks live in the Git client plugin. Mm -hmm. so, so. Yeah, looking forward to see that. Uh, well, for me, the biggest uh, repository I check out uh, more or less on a regular basis is a Linux repository, and yeah, it's really big. So I would, uh, it would help a lot. Uh, so, yeah. so yeah, you you must not use JGit for that repository. That I two don't. gig that, that two gig monster is is a beautiful thing. It's impressive how pretty that repository is. But yeah, never ever touch that thing with JGit. It, it just is not ready for that repository. It's <laughs> fine. Well, they develop we need for that. With the lab. Yeah. Okay. So, so thanks a lot. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. And, uh, are there okay. any uh, questions you would like to ask the platform seek or whether you need additional feedback? Um, the question I, I think feedback I would require would be related to the uh, the class I've created. If uh, you could review it, it'd be great. And uh, one more thing, and I'm not sure if it's a question, but uh, one thing I'd like to say is that to make that class useful for Git plugin, I need to go to the uh, to the plugins like the Git uh, GitHub branch source or GitLab or Bitbucket and um, either encourage the developers there or create the extension extensions myself so that when we're using uh, a multi-branch project and we have those plugins, uh, my class is able to derive the information we need to uh, recommend the best implementation. So uh, that's something I would have to do. I've decided that I would do it for GitHub uh, branch source plugin. I also raised a uh, discussion thread on uh, the uh, Jenkins Dev Group. So, uh, so, uh, so I'll 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 start with that, and I'll do. That's something I'm going to do as well. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, should I stop sharing my screen? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Alex. Yeah, I think next up is the custom distribution service. Yeah, so I can share my screen, I guess. So I don't have a slide deck ready. Um, I hope I can save that for the for the demos. Um, but I do have a couple of updates that I would like to share with the with the platform sake. Um, so as we seen in the last demo, um, we had the pack the custom distribution service uh, being able to generate at least your packages. Um, given a set of plugins. So if you could, you know, um, you could provide the service with a couple of plugins, it would go ahead and generate the, the package. Uh, I'm sorry, the configuration package that you need to generate the war. So for this, for this phase two 
um, for the phase two milestones, one of the major milestones was being able to um, to generate the war file and being able to share community configurations. So these were the two major ones. And additional to that was one of the uh, the third ones was being able to make pull requests using a bot. So I'll just talk about some of them in detail and then, you know, uh, not taking up too much time um, here. Um, a couple of them uh, would be, uh, I'll start, just give me a second. Um, yeah, the war download feature. So one of the major things that we added this time was the war download. So you can now, uh, hit the war generation and it will, you know, just, just download the war file for you given a particular configuration. So you can generate the configuration, provide it to the service, and then the service will um, generate the war file for you. It will obviously download it as well. Um, what we, there are a couple of downfalls to this. We do not support configuration as code. So if you provide a configuration as code section in your configuration file, um, it will likely break because there is no, uh, we do not have support for that as of now. Um, maybe that's something to add to the readme later on when the project gets self-hosted. Um, but yeah, for now we do not have configuration as code support. So that is one thing um, in the war download feature that we've added. The next feature that we came um, to to add was the community configuration page. So now we do have a community configuration page where users would be able to share all of the configurations that they've, they've developed. So uh, for now, it just uh, it just is on a local repository. So if I think I can I can I can see it. Uh, it's custom distribution services. Give me a second. I'll find that repository. Uh, till then, it is it's just hosted locally on my uh, account, um, and I hope it gets hosted later on to the Jenkins uh, organization so that everyone can find all of the community shared configurations there with its own release cycles and so on and so forth. Um, another feature that this um, that this update supports is that you can add your own URL. So if you have a URL or your company has a URL that you want to share configurations with, or you want to provide configurations on, um, yeah, support that. So you just change a bit of environment files, configurations, and you can, um, you can, you know, configure um, a repository where you can host all of your configurations. That ha a user docs have not yet been added, but they will be added soon uh, so that the users can see what kind of, um, what kind of uh, steps to follow to be able to custom it. But for now, yeah, if you run it locally, you can definitely, um, you can definitely um, store your configurations on that community config repo. That was the second update. And the third one, which was major, but wasn't added to this, um, to, to this uh, milestone was being able to create pull requests automatically using a Jenkins custom distribution service bot. So as the mentors decided that this, we do not quite know yet whether the plugin will be hosted on as a service, as a web application or a web service. So this, uh, this pull request doesn't quite make sense as of now, because, because there's no, there's no point in having a bot if the, if the service is not hosted. So, um, so these, this was another update that we tried to add, but yeah. Um, but as a mentor decided, we would maybe put it for phase three if the service is hosted on, on, on a, on a service. Um, so yeah, yeah not fun, non intended. Anyways, that was the two, uh, Updates. The third update was just some minor search functionalities, um, you know, so that you can search plugins, you can search, um, you can search community configurations and so on and so forth. Uh, these were just some of the minor updates, uh, not major. And um, uh, uh, the last update was that um, you can now the Docker compose works. Um, there are still changes being made to it, but you can definitely and quick start it. Um, so yeah, that was the last update so that now the project seems to be in a condition where it can be self run by the community. Uh, there are some changes as you can see this connect backend and frontend using the new Docker config compose. Uh, we're still working on that, but yeah, uh, you can still test out a couple of the features as of now. So yeah, these were the major updates and we have achieved almost all of the milestones for phase two. Um, so yeah, yeah, the project looks in a good condition. Yeah, I'm open for any questions, updates, discussion. No, uh, thanks a lot for the hard work. Um, yeah, it's great to see that uh, basically it creates a new level of uh, uh, services and user experience based on our tools, which we have already discussed in Platform Seek, like yeah. the custom work packager, the Docker images, etc. So basically, this project uh, accumulates uh, many other projects we have in the Seek and uh, provides uh, them as a service or as a self-hosted application. And yeah. I'm really uh, looking forward uh, to tr uh, try it out. Maybe we will be able to even uh, run it as a kind of image controller in the future. 
especially if there is support for Kanika. Yep, definitely. Um, yes. So that we could uh, package uh, images on demand uh, by using the, the tool as a service. So yep, definitely. Let's see. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But you uh, probably have the configurations uh, set up, so I'll probably add a fingerprint storage, uh, external fingerprint storage configuration also there. So yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm done. Thanks, slide in. So, Budika? Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. So, uh, uh, Yammer configuration support. So, uh, main task was uh, uh, this four was the uh, main task was, was budget Yammer configuration support and uh, new CLI SML schema validation and uh, YAML schema validation. So, uh, in uh, phase two updates, uh, I have completed that uh, Yammer configuration uh, support and it uh, already has been merged with uh, uh, version two uh, master. And uh, new CLI is almost finished, and uh, there are some discussions about that, and uh, will be merged in uh, uh, V3. And uh, this just next turn is doing uh, updates into version three as well. So uh, I think uh, uh, I, I I might be able to uh, merge the uh, new CLI uh, with version three before uh, phase two finishing. I I don't know. Uh, however. And uh, so there are a few ongoing sub, uh, updates uh, at the uh, moment. So those are, uh, there are uh, extensions in uh, Windows Service Wrapper, uh, like uh, uh, shared direct map and, uh, and uh, uh, runaway process clip. And uh, I think uh, shared direct map is already uh, removed from uh, this. So however, uh, in uh, YAML configuration support, uh, I have to uh, update the support for the, those extensions as well. Uh, so it is uh, how to uh, be done uh, to do. So uh, and uh, also I'm uh, at the moment I'm writing a, a YAML, uh, uh, I'm a user documentation for the uh, YAML configuration support. And uh, if you talk about uh, YAML support, so uh, as we uh, discussed in phase one, uh, we have provided those uh, uh, configurations in, in a more structured way, like uh, log service account and downloads on failure actions and environment variable. Those things are uh, getting in a more structured way, uh, uh, like in the uh, YAML configuration and also in uh, code base as well. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, how I have published a YAML uh, all option, um, uh, sample all option. Uh, file uh, where user can uh, use this uh, uh, file uh, where all the configurations has uh, implemented uh, as a, a test file so user can uh, use this as a uh, to, uh, to create the uh, configuration file so it has not matched it and there is uh, another uh, pull request has been created for uh, new updates for uh, yaml configuration support so if you talk about uh, new uh, CLI and uh, redirect command has been removed. So in the uh, after the uh, phase one updates, um, so uh, those are the uh, major updates that I have to uh, uh, tell about uh, this project. So there are uh, two uh, open uh, pull requests at the moment, uh, which I have to complete. Uh, one for new CLI, so uh, it is uh, under review, and uh, I think. Uh, I don't. I'm. I'm not sure whether you can uh, merge it in uh, um, uh, phase two. But uh, yeah, uh, we have to discuss uh, about that. So uh, how? Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, YAML configuration. Uh, YAML support uh, pull request has been uh, merged. But, but however, uh, I uh, open another pull request for. Uh, some few updates uh, uh, for that and uh, yeah it's under review i think uh, we can uh, merge it in the uh, 
before uh, uh, phase one uh, uh, presentation. Uh, so uh, those are the updates that I have to uh, present in uh, uh, this presentation. Um, yeah. Uh, is there any questions? So, Yeah, so basically, this project is one of the reasons why we do the groundwork for .NET Framework support in the Jenkins core because YAML configuration support is uh, uh, quite highly demanded by uh, configuration management tools. So learning that would uh, help uh, Jenkins administrators a lot, especially if they uh, use uh, various tools uh, to deploy a Windows service. And yeah, I'm really happy to see that. Uh, uh, we are getting close to the first release of this support. So hopefully next week by the demos it will be uh, out. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, shall I uh, stop sharing my screen now? Okay. Thank you. So Mark doesn't use Windows services, right? Not, not yet. I've got to get. I've got to get down to that level. I'm still using my login from a desktop and run it from a desktop. So you're right. I, I need to use services more. <laughs> I like. I like the new installer that the MSI installer does. The handles the service support. So I'm. This looks like a great project. Thanks very much. Thank you. So external fingerprint storage, our next topic, is that right? Oh, uh, yes. Hi. So um, uh, you can hear me, right? Awesome. So uh, I don't have exactly a presentation set up, uh, so uh, rather short notice for today's <laughs> meeting. But uh, I, I'll just talk about uh, the project and what we did uh, in phase two. So as a quick recap for phase one, uh, what we're basically building is an external fingerprint storage engine for uh, uh, Jenkins. Um, so uh, all your Jenkins uh, fingerprints can be stored instead of on the physical disk. They can be stored inside uh, an external storage. And uh, as a reference implementation, uh, we built the ref we built the ref uh, Redis fingerprint storage plugin around it. So you can configure Redis, and your fingerprints will automatically be saved inside the external storage. Um, so this is what we did in phase one. Uh, but uh, so there were a uh, few aspects that were remaining, some few missing features that we uh, went uh, that we targeted in this phase. Um, so one was that uh, earlier we had to. Uh, so if if the plugin was configured, uh, so basically at installation the 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 plugin was configured directly. So now we refactored it to use a descriptor implementation, so that now uh, uh, the user can go to Jenkins configuration page and can choose the uh, external fingerprint storage engine they desire. So tomorrow, say we get another uh, fingerprint storage plugin, say Postgres or say MySQL, then uh, you know the user can just install the plugin and then they can choose which plugin they want. So that was one of the features, and that was released uh, in two dot two four eight Jenkins core. Um, also, the next uh, feature we targeted was uh, the fingerprint cleanup. So, um, as a context, uh, the fingerprints uh, they automatically they get deleted on a periodic basis. Um, uh, whenever they uh, the builds they are referred to are no longer present on the system. So, when the builds they are referring to they are no longer on the system, the fingerprint is supposed to be deleted. But this functionality was not yet uh, present. Uh, for external storages, so we designed that uh, we extended the fingerprint storage API to uh, support this. So now uh, the external fingerprint storage plugin developers can uh, have methods where they can configure uh, their storages storage engines uh, to use this fingerprint cleanup facility, and that was also one of the things we released in 2.248. Um, also, uh, the Redis fingerprint storage plugin uh, implemented this API and uh, basically uh, we used cursors uh, so basically uh, to optimize this uh, cleanup so that we don't have to traverse all the fingerprints uh, like uh, on a on a all call. But yeah, we can use cursors and uh, that that is something we did. Um, and then we targeted migration. Migration has not been released yet, but uh, the PR is there. Um, so fingerprint migration basically is that uh, in fingerprints, um, 
whenever uh, say a person uh, configures an external fingerprint storage he might already have certain fingerprints on his old uh, physical disk these were uh, untouched uh, earlier so now we have introduced a lazy migration system uh, where whenever a finger an old fingerprint is referenced uh, it is automatically uh, transferred to the external fingerprint storage uh, as and when it is used so that is all uh, fingerprint migration was something we targeted and uh, we improved the testing for our plugin um, and i think that's about it that's what we targeted uh, and we might be looking at a new reference implementation in the coming weeks um, maybe tracing we don't know uh, but yeah so you you said you were considering potentially a new reference implementation do you have any hints you want to give us of which which storage backend you'd be using, or is that still to be determined? Um, so we have actually determined it. Uh, so we are doing it for Postgres. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So that will actually be a, so, uh, so we actually, uh, in the last meeting, we discussed uh, that, you know, we can offer certain optimizations when it comes to Postgres. So we can, uh, so the API can be built around. And so basically uh, Postgres is also a challenge because uh, it has a relational structure. Uh, Redis uh, used uh, um, basically it is a key value store, so this is like an it's it's a new challenge for us uh, when it comes to so it'll be something like a different reference implementation for plugin developers also that you know uh, when it comes to relational storages. So yeah, awesome. Uh, any more uh, questions? Uh, just one comment from me. Yeah, so firstly, it's great to see that uh, the work is progressing so fast. And yeah, we got uh, key API changes released uh, several weeks ago. We integrated the uh, APIs for fingerprint cleanup, etc., in 2.248. Uh, so this, all this API is still in beta, but um, it looks pretty solid. So hopefully in one of the next LCS releases, we will be able to say that the CPI is in G, and yeah, one great thing that now everybody can develop their own implementation of storages. So again, uh, in this project, it just works on reference implementations, but as for the pluggable storage stories, uh, we actually invite users uh, and Jenkins adopters to implement something uh, for their own needs. So for example, should you want to keep the data in Elasticsearch or in uh, whatever database uh, available in your cloud, like DynamoDB, and then you can just uh, take um, these APIs and quickly uh, write a plugin. And I guess uh, in the next phase, you may also have an external fingerprint storage plugin, which provides some basic APIs. So that's for me. Uh, so, sorry, I didn't get, get the last statement. Uh, so in the next uh, phase, we may also have an external fingerprint storage API plugin. Uh, yeah, so uh, actually that is something uh, I want to discuss in today's, uh, we have a sync up today. So yeah, basically that is that is tracing essentially, but uh, we were, we had some uh, roadblocks along the way for tracing because, you know, uh, it also needs a use case and we tried uh, um, starting threads on the developer mailing list, but we didn't get, uh, so yeah, it's July and we did not get many uh, use cases. So yeah, so we'll see uh, what happens. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, thanks uh, for this work. Excellent mm -hmm. result and, and impressive that it's in a weekly release already. So. Oh, like you had mentioned general availability of the API, what are the criteria to decide when it's declared general availability? So and we follow the Jenkins enhancement process. Um, there is already a proposal um, submitted as draft, JEP226. So the process is basically get APIs released as beta, get a reference implementation uh, released, then get feedback from adopters, uh, feedback from core maintainers, and then if everything is fine, adopt, uh, accept the JEP and make the API public. So I don't expect it to happen for the September release. So most likely it will be three months lock and uh, maybe sometime in December we may make it GE. But yeah, by December we will uh, 
hopefully have enough uh, field feedback about uh, the feature. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Okay, beta APIs are quite popular. For example, Artifact Manager uh, still uses beta APIs from the Jenkins code. Right. So 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 beta is not beta is not a mark of shame or ignorance. It's it's yeah. more yeah great. Thank it's you. a way uh, to deliver feature and uh, to evaluate that. So one of the ways to just deliver experimental changes, which works quite well. Excellent. Mm -hmm. GitHub checks API next, Oleg. So we have Keja on the call. So no, I'd like what? to present that in our next demo series. But uh, now we have uh, implemented uh, the customers implemented the, the, the part in the in the warnings checks and the coverage checks. So that works fine. So, Keisha, I missed it. You implement, you've implemented the coverage checks. Could you say again what was the other that you had implemented? Warning, Sanji. Yeah, we just consumed the API, the general API implemented before, in the warnings plugin mm -hmm. and the code coverage plugin. And uh, uh, th th there's a disappointing, mm, th disappointing feature is that we can't. Uh, send those trend features, trend graphs, trend diagrams from the Jenkins to GitHub because uh, those those diagrams in the Jenkins pages, in Jenkins views are HTML based, but what GitHub need is just a link to the images. So we didn't uh, uh, implement that feature, but uh, we provided some markdown based trend charts. I hope that works fine as well. Yeah, it's a great uh, start, and maybe in the future we could have uh, images as well, because uh, there are other use cases where images could be useful. For example, uh, at the previous Cloud Native SIG meeting, we had a discussion about Jenkins File Runner, and uh, mm -hmm. it's a fast engine which executes pipeline and then stops, obviously without providing you web UI. And for example, if uh, it was able to dump. Uh, uh, reports uh, as HTML or as images, again, it would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. So maybe at some point we could have uh, just feature just as a part of uh, uh, Jenkins uh, image framework, because now we advertise uh, all imaging around e-charts and the ones that I think is e-charts, so then we could probably add some logic for generating uh, images and downloading them. Yes, one thing I'm thinking is that is that feasible to um, to get those images from the REST API if we, uh, if we can implement that? Well, um, uh, I don't know whether that is feasible. Uh, it's technically feasible. Um, problem that it might be producing a lot of traffic. Uh, you will need to cache these images uh, some way. Maybe you may need uh, to put these images uh, to CDN again somewhere. And for example, GitHub allows to actually attach image uh, to um, uh, issue commands to pull requests. There is no magic there. It just uh, uploads it somewhere using API and then uh, uses this link. So maybe we could use uh, GitHub's uh, image hosting service for that. If not, uh, yeah, REST API definitely makes sense, but uh, in this case, we will def uh, need uh, to think about the implementation and uh, the load it will produce on Jenkins instances. As POC, it definitely, it's a definitely an excellent feature because if you have REST API, you can generate image and download it somewhere. And then you can handle this somewhere somehow to have uh, enough redundancy. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah. so if you're interested uh, to implement this feature, I think it will uh, find a lot of users uh, on its own. Personally, right now, I just do screenshots of graphs when I need to do something. But if there was a button, download this image from the web interface, which basically boils down to the same REST API, uh, it would be really helpful. Yeah, 
I've fallen in love with a Chrome extension that takes pictures of my Chrome web page. Same technique you're describing, Ola. I guess I, I, I would love that what Keshe is proposing if it mm -hmm. could eventually be available. That would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for the update. And yeah, thanks to all students. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't have so many participants on the call today because yeah, it's summertime. Everything is super slow, but at least uh, it gives you a lot of opportunities uh, to develop things. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, uh, let's discuss them. We still have 10 minutes until the end of the meeting. So if you need any assistance or if you're looking for some ideas, it's a place where we can discuss it. Yeah, it looks like not. Yeah. Thanks again uh, to everyone for demos. So Oleg, I have an open question to the to those students who are still on. Are your mentors actively engaged? Are you feeling like things are working? If not, take that to Oleg or to the org admin separately. We want to be sure that the mentors take good care of you and that you're feeling well supported by your mentors and the the, the Jenkins project. Yeah, we're doing uh, weekly check-ins with mentors. Uh, well, uh, this year it's a bit uh, informal. Uh, but uh, still we try to uh, contact everyone every week um, but yeah, if we miss something it's uh, definitely time to let us know because next week is evaluation and if you haven't uh, voted yet uh, in the doodle I sent for demo times please do because we need to, to schedule the meetings uh, yeah, this phase most likely we will do it again uh, as internal um, event uh, but yeah, for the next coding phase, we will be definitely doing Jenkins online meetup uh, or I guess multiple meetups. So for, uh, yeah, stay tuned and uh, yeah, thanks a lot to everyone for the great work because yeah, all projects they evolve, evolve really well uh, this year and yeah, I'm looking forward to see these features released. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks all. Excellent. Let's go ahead and end Thank the recording. So we'll post the recording in the Platform SIG playlist. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thanks.